Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Genesis chapter 2, verse 10, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 3, and Acts chapter 2, verse 11. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Thank you for helping us to realize how much you actually care for us, the planning that you did to get us to where we are. We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, Genesis chapter two, verse 10. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden and there it divided and became four rivers. All right, and so um, this is talking about Eden, you know, before all the corruption and before, you know, it being blocked off um, for um, access um, from Adam and Eve. And so um, here, the, the spirit of the Lord was speaking to me that, you know, he provided for us even before we were born, even before we sinned, even before, you know, Adam and Eve took a bite out of the apple. God was making provision for us, even in creation, knowing that we would have needs and knowing that Adam and Eve were going to fall. And so um, here, if you look at it, it's saying, uh, a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden and there it divided. So in Eden, this river divided and became four rivers. So it was flowing out, making provision out of Eden and, and making provision for the rest of the land, right? It didn't say that there was just a pool of water there in Eden that fred and, and you know, irrigated the garden. No, it flowed out out of Eden. So God had plans outside long before we even came. He knew that we would be populating this earth that he created. He put fish in the sea for us to eat. He put birds in the air. He put he put wood and 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 all sorts of things out in this world to make provision for us, right? So we need to remember that a lot of planning goes into your life, right? It's not just, um, you know, what, what job you'll take and what college you'll go to or what, you know, trade you'll take up. That's not the plan, just the planning that God wants for you, right? That you would be a missionary or this or that, right? He planned your eyelashes, right? <laughs> I look at my kids and, the three of them each have like, when you look at them, they look like they just have black hair. But if you, if they stand in the light, you clearly see that their hair is dark reddish brown. So each, all, all three of them have dark red brown hair. And so you can see it. And like, I've told people this and they're like, no. Oh, I think they just have, you know, maybe brownish hair. Maybe that's what you're seeing or something. And then people will see it in the light and they're like, their hair is red. And I'm like, I told you their hair is red. And so I just think it's just so funny that God planned such a tiny detail, you know, of them that would be different, right? From me, my husband, um, it runs in his family. He said his older brother had it. And it to me, it's just, I just think it's so cool of him, right? He knows how your hairline forms. He knows that you have that swirl pattern that he made, right? It's not that you have it. He made the swirl pattern in your hair. You know, he made your cuticles the way they are, right? God is so amazing. And he provided and made provision and food even all the way back to Eden, for you, right? He made seed within seed so that it could keep perpetuating and, and feed you when you came, right? That's an amazing God. That's a God who truly, truly loves you. Amen. All right. And so Hebrews chapter eight, verse three, for every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices. Thus, it is necessary for this priest to have also to have something to offer. All right. And so this is talking about Christ, right? And his offering. What was Christ offering? Christ offered his life, right? It, he didn't offer a gift, a, a lamb, a turtle dove, some some flower, 
right? He offered his life for us. So, and he was a perfect sacrifice because he never sinned, right? And so when he went and died for us, that was provision being made from the beginning. God was tracking the birth of Christ. God was getting ready for his son to come down and and be in man flesh so that he could atone for our sins, right? Even before Eden, He knew from the foundation of the earth that this was going to have to happen and that they were, we were going to have needs and we would need to be provided for, right? You know, you see these kids and you see their parents and it's like, it's a miracle, right? (laughs) We're feeding these kids, we're clothing them, they're not dying, you know, and it's, I'm not saying that for everybody, but, you know, it's just such a miracle families are to me and, you know, God makes provision, right? Just like a father in the household, he goes to work, he does the things that he does. A mother goes to work, she does the thing that she does, you know, depending on the arrangement and they provide for their children. God is providing for us. He has made a way for us and it is through Christ, amen? So the third verse is just reminding us to be a part of it, right? To to not just be on the outside looking in. This is Acts chapter two, verse 11. Both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. All right, and these, remember, were devout people. They were seeking God. They came to Jerusalem because they were seeking God. They knew the Hebrew God was the one true and living God. And so they all came from all around the world, right? Some of them Jews, some of them not. Some of them proselytes, meaning they had converted to Judaism, Cretans and Arabians. It says, and so they came all to Jerusalem on Pentecost seeking God, right? And so um, instead they found Jesus. They found out that Jesus was the son of God. How? Because the Holy Spirit fell. They saw this miracle. They experienced this miracle from the outside looking in. And there was their proof. If they were seeking God, God was like, hey, if you seek me, you're going to find me. Now, whether you're going to accept God at that point is up to you. But they they could see that the power of God was in this, right? This Jesus, the one whom the people crucified, was the son of God. He was the Messiah. He was the anointed one, the cornerstone that the builders rejected. So at that point, they needed to make a choice. But up until that point, they were always on the outside looking in as far as God providing. God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. God is a God who provides for all of his children. So, you know, up until that point, it's up to them, right? It's up to them. They were already seeking God. So what's the next main step that they should take? they should accept Christ. And that's, that's what we have done. That's what God has done for us. He made provision by food, shelter, shelter, clothing from the foundation of the earth. He's been providing for us when we were in him, he was providing for us. And then when he gave his son, he provided for us. He was a gift. He was a sacrifice um, that was atonement for our sins, us, his children, his babies. He, we needed a sacrifice. We needed a permanent sacrifice and atonement. So God gave it through his son. And so we need to not be on the outside looking in on this thing. He's given it to us. It's a free gift. Accept it now and tell others about it so they can accept it. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for our dinner tonight. Thank you for a pillow to lay on. Thank you for warmth and shelter, Lord God. We love you. We praise you. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. Help us to follow after you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, Go ahead and pray this prayer with me, but more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross 
And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word, and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So begin to seek his face today while he may be found. Um, also, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake is the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you and your life. Amen. Also, don't forget to go and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.